it is going to have to be a short show today, everyone. I'm apologizing because my editor went on vacation, and now I've discovered that the uh, rest of my team also decided, decided to take some time off at about the exact same time. Therefore, we have very little reporting for this month. That said, I'm Xavier Stordes, and welcome to Beacon Space tonight, and this is my much harder working co-host, Lupus. Working hard or hardly working, sometimes I do so much work, it's impossible to tell what I get done. I'm Lupus Kalbrecht, the true face of Beacon Space tonight. Our top story tonight... Um, I'm sorry. Production? That can't, that can't be right. One moment, folks. Um, seriously. Seriously, tell it. Terry's Tell Us Today is our top story. That's the best we could find. The bombastic arse who's always finding the craziest conspiracy th stories. I don't know, Lich. I find his stories rather entertaining. It's not like we have much else prepared anyway. Remember, the editors went on strike. Something about the working conditions. It includes working remotely from Telas even when we're away on location. Right, right. Well, I mean, I guess we don't have much of a choice. Oh, um, oh, everyone heard that, didn't they? <clears throat> Right. Well, our top story tonight comes from Telus' most famous podcaster for conspiracy theories and crazy insane stories. Today, Terry will be covering a mystery in Isolite Freight and their new owner, Oscar Mariana. Mariana recently acquired the company for a 44 billion alacrity arms in a total surprise move. In fact, this station already plans to interview Oscar next month as part of our off-delayed Lives of Beacon Space segment. In other news, uh, lauded reporter Trey Grin gives their regular update on news happening within the Children of the Vein sphere of influence. We'll follow that up with a leaked memo from the Agamala Syndicate regarding recent events in the 1211 sector as part of their ambitious hunt. Only time will tell how those actions turn out for them. Finally, tonight, snap elections have been called in the city-state of Bjorgen on Idarast. Will the Aether Ring be re-elected to the seats they filled via parliamentary procedure, or will those who wish to cast the monarchy out of the assembly prevail? All this, and not much more, after a brief word from our sponsor. Are you looking for that perfect island getaway? The destination vacation of your dreams? Then Telos is the place for you. Visit the floating cities of Telos, modern marvels of nature and engineering from the great mines of Kartakuk and Helocytus, built on the backs of gentle jellyfish giants. Experience the wonders of life like never before as a tropical paradise comes alive to serve you, a city of living green traveling over blue horizons where you don't become one with nature, but nature becomes one with you. From riding on the backs of whales and dragonflies to lounging on gentle lily pads and inside of fragrant flowers, or a million other things in between, there is always something for you on Telos. Telos, a world made for you. And we'd like to thank the TELUS Terraforming Initiative, along with the uh, Children of the Vein, for their continued patronage of Beacon Space tonight. Hello and welcome. As always, I'm Xavier Stordes, uh, joined by my co-host Lupus Kalbrek, and you may also know me on the Unrestricted Lorefarers Discord server as Lichmaster98, where I run uh, our regular Beacon Space uh, faction turn and... I'm joined to host this show. If you're new here, welcome on in. I hope you enjoyed our wonderful cold open into the world of Beacon Space and the um, fun and exciting activities that uh, get to take place in the news this cycle. I don't think we have uh, much more. Anything else to share there, Lupus, before we get started? Nope. I am co-anchor for Lawstream Lupus Calbrecht. I am GM for the Free Agents game set within a Beacon Space. And we're here to present to you the various law bits, the uh, wonderful, the amazing things that our factions, that the factions that play within the setting of Beacon Space have made to show off to the world. And we get the privilege of presenting them to you this month. 
Uh, speaking of presenting things, let's get started with our first segment brought to us, as always, by the Children of the Vein, as we get to hear their most recent news report, entitled Conflict Everywhere. This report has been made possible by the New Eden Gene Bank. Be a better you. Visit your local branch for a consultation. Hello, Beacon Space. This is Trey Grin, filling in for Chaz, who's out fishing today, here with the latest from around the sector. In the news this cycle, white whale protests, corporate conflict, and scientific breakthroughs. For our first story, an outbreak of protests has erupted across Tell Us from conservationist groups opposed to the ongoing white whale hunt this past cycle. Members of the Organization for Rare Colossus Advocates, ORCA, have staged a number of unscheduled protests, delaying several starships suspected of supplying megafauna hunters. While there was no reported outbreaks of violence, ORCA has successfully slipped past port security on numerous occasions, leaving local authorities baffled, provoking responses from other related organizations. Ryan Pritt, savant of the School of the Great Wanderer, had this to say, we who wander cannot abide those lost, twisted souls who would seek to harm the great creatures of the void. Stand with us, people of Telos. Heed the call of the wandering and protect the great whale of the void. The Anti-Hunting Association of Beacon Space, or AHABS, also issued the following statement. The Telos authorities have taken too long to recognize this issue. We hope that the gravity of the situation leads to decisive action against the hunters and the industries that support them. We will continue to follow this story as it develops. In other news, Hemisphere Logos representatives of the Children of the Vein, including Administrator Cardinal Blanche of Telos, were recently summoned to the Citadel of Veins on Hylocytus to discuss a major scientific breakthrough. Hemisphere Logos, the governing council body of the Veins, issued the following press statement. A sacred revelation has been divined, and with this holy insight we can elevate our proficiency in genetic elevation that brings all life closer to ascension. This discovery will bolster our sector-wide services, and we pray that this brings Beacon Space closer together as a community. Further details were sparse, but it appears that the Veins are planning to energize their expansion of services and outreach across the sector. While Logos are away, the Pathos will play. The Vein of Paradise announced the formation of a new media conglomerate this cycle, Paradiso Media. Owners of the new Eden Gene Bank, the Vein of Paradise, appear to have launched Paradiso Media as a direct competitor to the Vein of Glorious Delights, recent acquisition of Inkly Media. When asked for comment, Howling Star of the Vein of Glorious Delights had this to say, Bring it on, f***ers. As this media war unfolds between these two titans of industry, we can only wonder who exactly will be caught in crossfire. If you'd like to stay up to date on all the gritty details of this corporate conflict, check out The Grin Report tonight at 11, hosted by me, Trey Grin, as I provide a deep analysis of this and many other complex and interesting topics you're probably very interested in. And in a breaking story, the Calbert Killer has struck again using their strange vaporization ability to attack a group of people at the Little Will Compact Double Decker Mega Mall. If you are near the area, please take extra precautions and move to safety as the authorities arrive to contain the situation. If you have any details about the attack, please contact the Telesecurity Authority. As a reminder, a bounty has been posted for information that may lead to the capture of the Calbert Killer. And that concludes our sector report for this cycle. Are things in the sector starting to heat up? Tune in next time to find out. This has been Trey Grant, flipping out. Thank you, Trey, for your wonderful reporting, as always. Um, uh, Calbert, you wouldn't, by any chance, have, um, visited the, uh, Little Whittle Double Decker Mega Mall, would you, in any recent days? Oh, I... Oh, interesting. I haven't... Um, I... I'm being advised not to answer by my sense of self-preservation. We'll uh, accept your plea of the fifth of... Uh, the fifth of something which we don't know about, given it's undocumented in our, um, our history. 
with that, um, I think we can move on to our next report and thank Traegren, as always, for a wonderful report. Oh, up next, we have the Aguamala Syndicate's uh, a leaked internal memo that we have uh, recovered for purposes of demonstration to you all today. Let us take a look at it. This is an internal memorandum which is entitled to the members and affiliated patrons of the Aguamala Syndicate from the assembled leaders of the same organization, and it has the subject, The Hunter's Way. I'll uh, read it to you now. In light of recent sector events, we would like to formally confirm reports of the destruction of the Aguamalan fleets La Lanza and Lapides Pegu. Both fleets were destroyed in a conflict with agents of the Tahora Fai, with an Aguamalan, Aguamalan third fleet, La Casa de Fieres, still in the area, taking significant damage. While this may not be the news you expected, or indeed wanted to hear, with respect to all Aguamalan operations in 1211, it should not come as a surprise. All hunts bring risk. And to think otherwise is to lessen the commitment and bravery our hunters display whenever they pursue a quarry. When we hunt, we put ourselves in the hands of Diosa, Diosa, Diosa Fortuna and let El Destino decide. Our fate, the accumulation of every choice, and favor leading to that point. Of our fleets, some hunters remain, scattered, homeworld bound. Doubtless, there are some among them who return to hunt the white whale once more to face those El Decino has set in our path, to test our resolve. Let our legends tell of, the, tell of those who do so, and of those who have fallen before. Such is our way, the hunter's way. As a uh, reminder, this is a leaked internal memorandum from the Aromala Syndicate that uh, Beacon Space Tonight has recovered um, for your consumption. And we remain politically neutral, as always, but we must uh, condemn in the most sincere terms any such organization which embroils itself with the piracy, the raiding, and the uh, unlawful gains. And uh, we thank our sponsor, the owners, the managers of Telus, uh, the Children of the Vein, and the New Eden Gene Bank. Be a better you. Quite, uh, quite as always. And of course, uh, one of our other very popular song sponsors being the Aguamala Tourism Company. Perhaps a visit to Gome is all you need. There's no place like Gome. Of course not. Uh, as always, we'd like to thank the Aguamala Syndicate for their contribution to this floor stream. And uh, we can move right along to our next and newest report coming to you from the Assembled Commonwealth. Yes, it is my favorite time of the broadcast. It is the ongoing reporting on the internal struggles of the assembled Commonwealth, who are going through somewhat of an identity crisis. Uh, the report that we have received from the assembled Commonwealth reads as follows. The Aethering Senwin has announced her intention to call for a snap election in the city-state of Bjorgen in the coming weeks to coincide with the elections for Peleus's and Coritas's special representatives to the assembly. Early on this morning, in front of a hastily assembled press conference, the Aethering said, and I quote, My decision to call this election is in response to the months of opposition and debate over my legal right to stand as a representative of the people of Bjorgen and citizens of the Commonwealth. It is my intention to put an end to this debate once and for all. For too long, the questions over my suitability have clouded the assembly and prevented important work from being done. The quote concludes. The Aethering called on those who oppose her to, quote again, challenge me on my positions, policies, and record, not on the circumstances of my birth. The Aethering ended her speech by saying, quote, My duty has always been to the Commonwealth and its people. I have nothing more to give than my service. Let the people of Bjorgen decide my worthiness for this office, for the greater good. While the announcement has shocked many, it is perhaps the only solution to the political deadlock that has engulfed the Assembly as of late. The coalition that has formed around the Aethering has been strengthening in recent months, but it still lacks the political power to control the Assembly. A win here could sway the remaining neutral holdouts to support her coalition in the Assembly. 
Looking at the opposition figures, they've reacted to Etherring's announcement with cautious optimism, calling the decision a pleasant surprise and, another quote, win for a Commonwealth democracy. However, Representative Lange has called the election a, quote, cynical attempt at aping participation in democracy. Lange went on to say, this is nothing more than a bid to complete her power grab and silence those with legitimate concerns over the involvement of the Aetharchy in the Assembly. Our own information gathering found that recent polls in Bjorgen suggest that the Aethering garners significant support from the public with over 60% approval rating. It is unclear at the moment who will stand against the Aethering, but whoever does will have a serious uphill battle to fight in this political arena. Quite an interesting report coming out of the Assembled Commonwealth. Uh, thank you, Kalbrek, for bringing it to our attention. And there is one additional piece of information that is useful for uh, the Commonwealth's announcement here. Um, if you're a member of the Discord, um, you should keep an eye out on the, uh, the channels for announcing Beacon Space updates for uh, some more engagement on the story where members of the uh, Beacon Space community at large will be asked to uh, participate in the election themselves. Uh, it'll be a, an interesting way of getting everyone involved and um, was in fact a, a request of the Commonwealth themselves. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. It should be coming uh, available out, uh, I think within the next 24 to 48 hours. I just need to uh, confirm with them that they are ready for the uh, form and any associated information they'd like to, to get announced at that time to go live, but it's all related to this storyline, which is part of their quest. Um, so it'll be interesting to, to see how people vote and uh, get to help them influence the decision uh, the decisions made. It's been uh, an interesting political uh, discussion to follow and to observe, especially given the back and forth and nature of the tightrope of power that is being wielded there. Uh, you can go more in detail in Beacon Space Red and Beacon Space Green, who are following uh, the uh, the biases of either side. Uh, you, of course, can subscribe to the echo chamber of your choice. Uh, and I'm sure there is somebody providing um, what they believe to be um, a mashup of red and green. Um, which yes. Does that just become brown? Is that what red and green? Sure does. The the brown channel is uh, one of the cheapest. Well, that's uh, great for anybody who's uh, looking to save some money on their uh, news subscription services. Of course, we thank the Assembled Commonwealth for all the effort they put in uh, to this quest line and the lore associated with it. It has, of course, been very cool to see. So keep an eye out for that upcoming announcement. And with that, though, I think we've made it to our our topical, our most important broadcast announcement. Uh, it's that's what the script says, but you know, I don't think I trust the editors uh, that uh, stayed behind and the like two that continue to work on it. But um, today we get to take a listen to portions of Terry Tellus's today podcast, um, and let's just see what he's uncovered about Isolite Freight. Indeed, let us go to the best podcast in Beacon Space. There are them there, what they done shipping company there was ran now by Montfort. That's right, folks. Them there's Montfort who do own the whatchamacallit. The who's it? The, the pleasure yacht in the belt. Isolite Freight. A worker-owned, honest, be-come-do-good company has been robbed of the coastal elite. That them there one percenters are bleeding the honest folk of the freight, and they're doing it so that they can mass ship baby bones in some dark rituals for eternal life. Can, can somebody remind me why this was our top story? 
please. To collect these them their baby bones, they're using a newfangled spangle technology that I ain't seen the likes of before I'm at some 47 years on this planet. Some kind of brain machine that's connected to their souls. Some kind of big drone tech, folks. That's right. Nature's unthinking, unfeeling drone invaders. They're taking your jobs, they're taking my job, and soon enough the whole galaxy gonna be some damn drone parade. You watch this space for the Montfort, Drone loving, baby snorted, arsalite freight. They're up to no good. No good. No, we'll have to we'll have to be challenging this reporting. I'll I'll be sure to ask the owners of Isolite, Oscar Marina, the new owner, in fact, about Isolite's goals with any new technological discovery on Lives of Beacon Space next month. I'll go update my notes. That them there Beacon Space Broadcasting are in on it too. Rotten crooks taking foreign money. Didn't give me my airwaves, even though there's tens of you out there listening. Dozens of supporters. All Terry is going to get what I done rightfully deserve. Remember, like and subscribe underneath my page, and you can donate there as well with the link. Please send your comments to my email, which you know is terryturtledunflipped at www at edu.net. Or I've caught up with some of the times, some of the new Fangle Spangle technology. You can at me on both Paradiso Media or on Ingly Media. My wife helped me set it up on there. I I think that's enough of this podcast for today. I'm I'm gonna have to have a word with the editors as to why they thought that was worth uh, broadcasting. <sighs> Thanks for joining us on our newest and hopefully the last time it ever has to run segment of Terry's Tell Us Today podcast. Indeed, you can find the full back catalogue of Terry's podcast and indeed support it financially on your podcast provider of choice. Ah, <sighs> Man, that was an interesting uh, feature story today. Indeed, the top stories that we bring are usually the the most sparkling, the the most fantastic. And truly, we had some highlights today from the factions that we received missives from, and we are very appreciative of everyone who submits something for us to listen to today. Absolutely, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to today's episode of uh, Beacon Space tonight. And uh, hopefully you're able to join us uh, this upcoming Saturday, June 4th, uh, for the next faction turn that uh, will be taking place. Until then, I guess I've been uh, Xavier Stortis. Loops Kelberg, you got anything to end us out on? I don't. Not today. I am ready to go on my own workers' strike. Well, uh, maybe you can put some effort of that worker strike into uh, getting a, a new schedule announced for uh, some new free agent app sessions that I, uh, I've heard you've been trying to get scheduled here. Yes, indeed. Watch this space. Uh, soon we will have new free agents dates going up. Uh, it's been uh, quiet for the last two weeks, uh, thanks to my own travels in meat space, but they will be returning in Storm and should be back to being regular every week. If you'd like to play, you join the Discord, a link on the Twitch channel, or you can ask one of us, um, and you can get playing within the world of Beacon Space. Absolutely. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. We'll end you on out on some fantastic sci-fi tunes. Um, brought to you by the uh, wonderful library of Norse Foundry. Thanks everyone for joining us. We will see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>